Hello everyone, welcome to the overview presentation for the style change detection task at PAM 2020. I'm Maximilian Meyer and I'm presenting the task on behalf of the style change detection task team, which consists of Eva Zangerle, myself, Günther Specht, Martin Potast and Benno Stein. So let's start by talking about the task itself. In general, style change detection is the task of within a document, finding the positions at which style changes occur. And we usually use that as a proxy to say that authorship changes at those positions. And so for this year's edition of the task, we posed two questions to participants. First, they had to determine whether the given document has been written by more than one author. So in other words, are there style changes within that document? And the second question is, between which consecutive paragraphs in the given document do those style changes occur? So note that this is a little bit harder than last year's edition of the task, which only asked for how many authors a text was written by, but you didn't have to determine at what positions the authorship changed. Uh, but on the other hand, it's also a little bit simpler than the general version of the task, because we guarantee that style changes only ever occur between paragraphs and not at some other arbitrary position within the text. So let's look at a few examples to really see what this is about. Uh, we have three example documents here. Let's look at two of them. Uh, example document A on the left side uh, consists of two paragraphs, both of which were written by the same author. So for the first question or the first subtask, the answer would be no. It's not a multi-author document. And for subtask two, we would identify that there is no style change between paragraphs one and two. So there's an indicator array for at which paragraph style changes occur. And there are two paragraphs here. So there's one entry and that entry is zero, signifying that there is no style change here. If we, on the other hand, look at document C, that document consists of four paragraphs that were written by a total of three different authors. So the answer to the first question is obviously yes, it is a multi-author document. And for the second question or the second subtask, uh, the answers would be there is a style change as indicated by the red line in the graphic. Uh, there's a style change between paragraphs one and two and a style change between paragraphs three and four, but no style change between paragraphs two and three. So, of course, to organize a task, we need a data set for that task. And we want our data set to be as realistic and as natural as possible. But to create such a data set, we have to fulfill some requirements for our data source that we create the data set from. So we need a source where we have multiple, preferably many authors that write about broadly the same topic we need a data source where the texts are freely available so that we can legally use them for our data set. And those texts should also have a sufficient length so that we can create natural documents from them. And we need the texts to be about roughly the same topic. And to fulfill those requirements, we again, like last year, used the question and answer platform Stack Exchange as our data source. So Stack Exchange, as many of you probably know, is a network of question and answer sites. Uh, right now it has 276 sites. And the best well known of those is probably Stack Overflow, which I think everyone who's ever written some code in their life knows. It's become kind of an essential resource for coders. But there's also a lot of other sites in the Stack Exchange network that deal with a very broad range of different topics. So for example, there are sites on topics like data science or economics or literature or philosophy and so on. So we cover a very, very broad range of different topics. So we use Stack Exchange for our data source, but unfortunately you cannot use question and answers from Stack Exchange as they are for creating a data set. We had to do some cleaning. For this, we removed things like links, images, code snippets, lists, quotes, and so on. Uh, we also removed very, very short questions and answers that weren't usable for creating documents as we needed them. 
uh, we removed questions and answers that were edited after they were created. Because one notable thing about Stack Exchange is that everyone can edit anything. So someone who is not the original author could edit an answer. And then it wouldn't be usable for us anymore because we don't know who wrote the text. So we removed everything that was edited more than, more than one time. And we also removed questions and answers that were not written in English, which does occur on Stack Exchange. So we had to filter those out. And this gives us a collection of raw texts for which we know the author, basically, from which we can then create single and multi-author documents by combining text snippets together into documents. Always only taking documents, uh, always only taking text snippets from the same Stack Exchange site, so to make sure that the document is always about roughly the same general topic. And the data sets we created like this were then split into training, validation, and test set, where the training and validation set was given to the participants and consisted of 50 and 25% of all the documents we created respectively. And the test set, which again is 25%, was retained for evaluation purposes and was kept secret. So this table is a brief summary of the pr properties of the documents in our data set. So every document has between zero and 10 style changes within it. Every document was written by one to three authors. Uh, the document length is between 1,000 and 3,000 tokens. Uh, all documents are written in English, and we guarantee that style changes occur only between paragraphs. So I talked about dataset in singular until now, but actually for this year's task, we had two datasets. And they differed in how broad the range of topics that is included in them were. So we had one dataset that we called dataset narrow, for which we took questions and answers from 12 Stack Exchange sites. And all of those sites cover topics related to computing technology. So all documents in this dataset have something to do with computing technology. And the other set is called dataset wide and contains questions and answers from 25 sites. And those cover a very, very broad range of different topics. So for, account, for example, uh, we include astronomy, economics, history, linguistics, mathematics, and so on. So the documents in this data set deal with very, very different topics. And we did this to see the impact of topical diversity on the models that the participants submit. Uh, for the evaluation, we decided to use a single evaluation metric, namely the F1 score, for both tasks. Uh, as mentioned just now, we have two data sets. So we calculated the scores for the two subtasks we had, the two questions, by averaging the scores for them on both data sets. And we then also calculated an overall score that's just the average of the scores for the two subtasks. The approaches that were submitted. Um, we had three submissions to TIRA, but unfortunately only two of those submitted a working notes paper. Uh, the first of those is an approach called Mixed Style Feature Representation and B-Maximal Clustering, written by Castro Castro and others. And they basically use 185 stylometric features, including character-based lexical and syntactic features, but explicitly excluding features that capture the semantics of a text. And they then use those features to define a, a similarity metric between paragraphs and use B0 maximal clustering to cluster paragraphs based on that similarity into authors. And the second approach is called style change detection using BERT by Ia and Vosogi. And they basically use BERT as a feature extractor to describe paragraphs and documents and then run random forest classifiers on those features to solve both subtasks. So interestingly, we have two very, very different approaches here. Uh, the first approach explicitly excludes its features that deal with semantics. And the second approach uses BERT, which is very well known for capturing semantics. So almost contrary approaches here, which is very interesting. 
Uh, in addition to the participants' submissions, we also calculated a very simple random baseline that just uniformly produces random predictions for both tasks, just as a very simple comparison baseline. So, looking at the results, uh, the approach by Ia and Vosogi, which uses the BERT model as the feature extractor, uh, did overall best. So they have achieved an overall F1 score of about 75%. The other two participants' submissions, for which one of which we don't have a working notes, unfortunately, uh, they performed around the same, around 64% overall F1. And the baseline was 50%, as expected, by the way the questions are posed. So all of them performed significantly better than the random baseline. Um, for the two approaches for which we had working notes, so we knew how they worked, we also looked into it a little bit more in detail. And we compared how they performed on single author documents versus on multi-author documents. There are two really interesting things to note here. So the approach by Isa and Vosogi, um, we can see performs basically perfectly on subtask two for single author documents. So they are very, very good at determining when there is no style change between paragraphs. Interestingly, they did not as well on subtask one for single author documents, which is interesting because you could, in theory, infer the answer to subtask one from your predictions on subtask two. And that's what Castro Castro et al. did. So this suggests that maybe the approach by Ia and Vosogi could be improved if they got rid of their separate classifier for subtask 1 and used the predictions for subtask 2 to infer the answer for subtask 1. So that's a, a possibility for maybe an improvement. And also an interesting thing to note is that the approach by Castro Castro and others performed best on subtask 1 for multi-author documents. So their approach seems to be very good at the identifying documents that have been written by more than one author. Uh, we also looked a little bit into the impact of the topical breadth, which was the reason why we created two data sets. And what we can see here is that apparently the task seems to be a lot easier on the narrow data set. So if we have a data set that contains documents that all deal with roughly the same topic, the task seems to be significantly easier. So for example, looking at the approach by Ia and Vosogi, uh, for task one on narrow, we had a score of 70%, whereas on the white data set, we had only 75%, uh, 57%, sorry. So that is a very significant difference here. And basically the same is true for all the other combinations, except for the approach by Castro Castro and others on task one, where the performance is roughly the same. So to briefly conclude, we organized this year's style change detection task. Uh, we posed two subtasks to participants. Unfortunately, we only had two submissions. But they were very interesting submissions and very different submissions. Uh, for next year, as a little teaser, we plan on basically repeating the same type of task, but with a little difference in the data set. So this year we focused on topical breadth in the data set between the documents. Next year we want to focus on topical coherence within single documents. So next year we want to make sure that within a single document, every paragraph really deals with exactly the same subject matter. And we want to see the impact that that has on the result. Um, the task formulation itself will stay exactly the same. So input and output format will also be exactly the same, which will allow us to run next year's approaches on this year's data set and also the other way around. So we can hopefully derive some very interesting insights from that. And if you are interested, we are very looking forward to your participation. Okay, thank you for your attention.